Hello, thank you for joining us today here on the Motor City Church YouTube channel. We're so excited to connect with you and to bring you life-giving, hope-filled messages. I encourage you, take just a moment, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure that you like this video and we'd love to hear how it's helped you. Please do that and we look forward to connecting with you more and more right here at Motor City Church. Today's message, I believe, is going to be a great encouragement to you and your life. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent today on this New Year's Eve day. Father, we don't take it lightly that we can be in the house of God today. And Father, I believe that today is going to carry us into the new year with faith, with power. Father, that we will have far more in 24. In Jesus' name, give the Lord one more hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for more? Well, I'm ready to bring you a word today. Tonight, at mid, uh, right before midnight in Times Square, they're going to drop a ball. In fact, there it is right there. Now, it's going to start a little bit before midnight, or in my house, 10 o'clock is the new midnight. <laughs> Come on, how many of you know what I'm talking about? All right, look, some of you under 30, stop raising your hand, all right? You're, you're going to stay up till midnight. I'm not, I may not make it till midnight, but we set all of our clocks ahead two hours so we can call it midnight and be done. But there's going to be a ball drop. It has 2,600 water for crystals on it. 32,000 LED lights. It costs well over a million dollars. Or as Lisa likes to say, that's my new ring that you're going to get me. <laughs> keep, keep believing, baby. Keep, keep believing. So today, we're going to do a countdown as well. And you're going to help me, amen? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna help me do a little bit of a countdown today. Pastor Dave gave us a word a couple of weeks ago, what the Lord had spoke to him, that God wants to do far more in 24. Amen. And so today I'm going to give you 10 things very quickly. I'm not going to take long if you'll say amen. If you don't say amen, we may be here a while. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see how it goes. But I'm going to give you 10 things that are going to help you put into practice how to receive more in 24. Because it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Amen? So we can't just say it. We've got to go and we've got to do it. So I'm going to give you some pastoral advice today, if that's okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your neighbor and say, I think this is going to be for me. And, and a little bit for you. That's right. So... I don't know, all, all ten of these, the last couple are very important for everybody. The others, you may pick and say, well, yeah, these are for me. I know I'm doing pretty good in that. If you need all ten of them, we got a special prayer room after service, and we'll pray for you. <laughs> we'll cast devils out of you, whatever we got to do. Uh, but, but take these, pay attention to these things. Let's begin by reading what Pastor Dave gave us a couple of weeks ago, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 in the Message Bible. I want you to write these down, get them, put them in your phone, take all 10 of these down, write the scriptures down, and go back and look at them. Here's what Ephesians 3.20 says. God can do anything. You believe that? Yes. You know far more. Everybody say far more. Far more. Say far more, far more. Than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. So if you can dream it, that's good. God can even do more than what you're dreaming. Well, I think God could do this. I think God could do that. He can, but he can do far more than that. So today as we talk about a countdown to more, let's start, and you're going to help me, and I'll guide us through this, and, and you'll be in practice by the time it gets to midnight 
or 10 p.m., whatever time you celebrate tonight, uh, you'll be in practice for this. So I'm going to give you these 10 things. Are you ready? Everybody say 10. Yeah. So what is number 10? Are you ready for it? Yeah. Number 10 is this. Work on your attitude. Yeah. Romans 15 and verse 5. I'm going to give you scripture for all of these. Romans 15 and verse 5 says, May the God who gives you an encouragement give you, everybody say me, the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. Leave that up for just a second. You need the same attitude toward each other that Jesus had. If Jesus isn't mad at your neighbor, you shouldn't be mad at your neighbor. If Jesus isn't frustrated with your neighbor, you shouldn't be. But some of us have got to have an attitude adjustment. If you want more in 24, I'm telling you, you're going to have to work on your attitude. This is key in life. Amen. You don't want to be that person in 24 that has a bad attitude about everything. Always complaining. Yeah. Read the scripture. You know who didn't get in the promised land? The complainers. Right. Brian Tracy said this. You cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude toward what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. John Maxwell said, people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. Anybody got kids that got an attitude sometimes? Tell them they need to work on it. Tell them Pastor Steve said, you can throw me under the bus at your house, I don't care. That they need to, but you know what? It begins with you. We all need to work on our attitudes. We need to have godly attitudes. We need to work on that. We need to say, Lord, uh, do a work deep on the inside of me that, that my attitude gets better toward things. Some people will complain about everything. You don't want to be that person. Amen? Amen. So, all right, ready? That was 10. So say 10. 10. Nine. nine. What is nine? Nine is you're going to have to figure it out. In Proverbs 15 and verse 22, it says this. Refuse good advice and watch your plans fail. Take good counsel and watch them succeed. Let me give you three words under figuring it out. Planning, intentional, and counsel. You need, if you're going to figure things out in your life, some of you got stuff going on, and, and you just think it's just going to keep happening. I don't know what I'm going to do. You need to stop all of that and say, you know what, we're going to figure this out. There's been times in mine and Lisa's life where I've had to take her by the hand and during tough times and, and troubled times, and I'd say, baby, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to figure it out. With God's help, we are going to figure this thing out. I don't know how. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what we're going to do, but we will figure it out. You're going to have to figure some things out. You know how you're going to do it? You're going to, be, you're going to have some planning about it. You're going to be intentional about it. I'm going to intentionally. That was my word for the year a couple of years ago, that I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to get up, and, and I'm, you know what? I'm going to figure out how to have a better attitude. I'm going to figure it out. Well, you know my personality. Well, you know what? God will change your personality today. Today. Everybody say today. Look at your neighbor and say, that might be for you. But you're going to have to plan. You're going to have to be intentional. You're going to have to get counsel. Today, we're helping young adults at our house. They wanted to do vision boards. I'm, we're going to teach them how to do vision boards. Why? They wanted to learn how to plan for their future and how to get a vision for what God could do because they got to get ready for more, for far more in every area of life. You have to make a commitment to work on the things in your life. Some people don't want to work on it. Some people don't want to figure it out. They think they're going to be okay. I want to tell you, pastoral advice, you're not going to be okay. If you don't make some changes and make a commitment, you're going to be the same three years from now that you are today. And, and, and the changes you make today will affect the way you live tomorrow. It'll affect your family. It'll affect your children. I got uh, some of my grandchildren here today. My attitude will affect their children. What I do intentionally will affect generations. My son, my daughter, the, my grandchildren. What I do, if I'll do it intentionally, it'll affect them. By the way, you all need to pay attention because the Bible says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That means it bypasses them and goes to you all. I'm just saying, 
Mama may not get any money. The grandchildren might get the money. All of a sudden, my Christmas present just got better. Amen? <laughs> Papa, what do you need? I'll, I'll go get you a Diet Coke. I'll go get you some lunch. What? You make a commitment to work on the things in life and get it figured out. With God's help, you will figure it out. Your plans are not going to fail. Some people need counsel. You need some counsel. You need some godly counsel. You're getting counsel from all the wrong places. Why are you getting your money advice from broke people? Why, why are you getting somebody trying to tell you how to run your life when they can't figure out their own life? You can't even run your own life. Why are you trying to run mine? I think that's a song somewhere. Amen? All right, I'm getting warmed up. All right, you got to figure it out. Everybody should figure it out. All right, so everybody say, ready? We're, we're, we're going to start with 10. 10, 9, Eight. All right, what is eight? Let's get ready. We're going to practice kindness, and we're going to break selfishness in 24. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 says this. He has told you, this is out of the Amplified, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you except to be just and to love and to diligently practice kindness and and compassion to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self righteousness. I got to diligently practice kindness. You want a better life? Be kind. Be kind. Well, I don't know how to do that. Figure it out. Work on your attitude. All these tie together. You're going to have to be kind. You want a better marriage? Be kind. You want a better relationship? Be kind. you got to break selfishness. I believe the root cause of problems in marriages is selfishness. I want my way. The truth is, I want my way. I don't really care. When we're in an argument, at, not that we ever argue because she's always right, but, <laughs> but if we ever were, it's because I want my way. I don't care what you want. What I want is I want it to go my way. Because I think I'm right and I think you're wrong. And we got to break that attitude. Some people think that whatever affects them is all that's important. Well, I don't care how it affects you. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do about it. What they care, what they want to know is how does it affect me? And they don't, they, they don't go that extra mile and say, you know what? My attitude, my actions might be affecting someone else in my house we got to break that selfishness. we got to practice kindness in 24. All right? So, ready? 10, 9, 8, 7. What is 7? Seven? 7 is we got to make better choices. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. and This is huge. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. How much of your heart? All of it. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You have the power to choose. If you're a young adult, older teenager, you got the, you got the ability to choose your attitude today. All those things we just talked about. Am I helping anybody? I know I'm just, I'm just giving you some pastoral advice today. But you got to make better choices. You got to... You, you have the power to choose your attitude, to choose your career, choose how you treat one another, treat how you think. Uh, you get to choose your thought patterns. You get to choose whether or not you think you're, you're uh, going to make it or not make it. But here's a question I have for you in 24. What is the basis for your decision making? Well, it's what the economy's doing. No, it's not either. Not if we're believers. Well, you know, it's, it's what my cousin said. Why are you basing your decisions on what your cousin said? Well, you know, it's, it's the way I was raised. Well, anybody ever think you might have been raised? Not you, but you might have been raised improperly? I'm not I'm just saying they may not have known everything. They may not have practiced the word the way you practice the word. And you got to make better choices that line up with the Word. Some people, 
they're, they're, they're not making choices lining up with the word. They got their opinions, and they think it's the word. And I see them post stuff that's not the word. They may say it's the word, and they're good at posting. They're just really bad at theology. I know I'm right about this. Because people are posting opinions and almost like they're adding, and God said. I want to tell you, God didn't say. There are some people saying stuff God didn't say. Amen? Amen. That, that's helping you, I hope. All right, ready? 10, 9, nine 8, 7, 6. What is 6? You got to be more connected to church. You want a 24 to go better? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11 says this, And he himself gave some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We may not act like it, but the church is the most powerful institution on earth. I read article after article about how people have not reconnected in church after the pandemic. They are choosing the, the couch over the church. They're choosing just to watch online. They're choosing just to do what they want to do. And I want to tell you, listen to me, that is a mistake. You got to get your kids in church. You got to get them in youth group. You got to get them serving. I like seeing... Uh, some of our kids serving. We got youth on cameras today, and we had youth greeting today. Sometimes we got them uh, ushering and all that. You know what? We're training up another generation. We're getting them plugged into church. The world's after them. The world, more than ever, through their devices and phones and iPads and technology and all of that. I heard about somebody the other day that said they their kids are like. 14 or 15, they have no internet in their house. Their, their kids have no internet on their phone. Well, that seems awfully harsh. Well, let's see where they're at in five years, ten years. They might be better off. I don't think you're depriving them. You know, all the kids are yelling at me right now, and they're praying. If my mom takes away my internet, Pastor, you are in deep, deep trouble with me. But you got to be connected to church. 24 is going to be a time here at Motor City, Louisville. It's going to be a time of great worship. It's going to be a time that the kids' ministry is going to explode. Youth ministry is going to explode. you got to get them here to teach them to go serve over there and serve the poor at open table. And they're, they're dishing out things, and they're learning to pray for people. And you're going to learn to grow in the prayer ministry. And there's going to be discipleship and leadership. And the future here is very bright. In all of those areas of what God is doing in this house, it's just scratching the surface. I'm so glad we got new campus pastors, Pastor TJ and Lindsay. Come on. Come on. Give, give God a praise. And I want to tell you today, the Lord, as I was preparing this, said to tell you great days are in your future. That God has prepared you for such a time as this. That he's orchestrated your steps and guided you for such a time as this. And the days of, of past days are not going to be an indication of the glory that is yet to be revealed through you all. And what God is going to do in your ministry, in this house, and beyond these walls even. We're glad you're here. This is your house. This is where you belong. Louisville, you're in the right city at the right time, at the right place for the favor of God to be released. And nothing by any means shall harm you. And his word will not return void. And you're about to step into glorious days that you haven't even experienced yet as the Lord. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. In my best T.E. Jake's voice, you better get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ten, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five. What is five? Five is you got to do right things. You got to do right things. James 4 and verse 17 says this in the Amplified. So any person who knows what is right to do but, but does not do it to him it is sin. We know right things. As believers, we know the right things to do. You know what you're posting is stupid. It's probably not even true. Making you look bad, your family look bad, your children look bad, might make God look, try and make God look bad. Blaming God for stuff he didn't have anything to do with. You got to learn to do the right things. You got to learn to live a life of excellence. Man, we got to learn to have excellence in our homes. We got to we got to learn to teach our kids excellence. We we, we got to raise them up and teach them. And, and the world's not going to teach them. The world's teaching them some crazy stuff. We got to teach excellence. We got to teach them the word. We got to teach them how to live life. You got to do the right things. Let it start with small things. You're out in the parking lot, got your groceries, you empty your cart, and you just push it right in the middle where nobody else can park. What is wrong with you? I had a guy sat in my ministry for years. You know the one thing really he remembers is I taught him to put his grocery cart back. Well, you know, I did teach on faith and healing and <laughs> believing and all that. But at least it's a start. At least, you know, the bread doesn't belong in the Tylenol aisle. You got two loaves of bread and you're there and you're in the pharmacy. And you're like, oh, man, you know what? I really only need one. And you put it in, in, over there by the aspirin. What is wrong with you? Operate in some excellence. Don't let your kids mess something up and not clean it up. They spill something and think somebody else is going to clean it up. No, you clean it up. You mess it up, you clean it up. But you got to, okay, I told you it was just some pastoral advice. Some of you want peace in your life. You're not doing the right things to get peace. You're yelling, you're screaming, you're fussing, you're fighting. Listen. You, you just got to go home. You want, you want to start getting some peace? And, you, and you know, some of you want to go fight devils? You can't fight devils. You can't get over a, a sink full of dirty dishes. It freaks you out. Who does these dishes? I don't know who does it. I don't know who does it. Wait a minute. And you want to go fight devils? You got a devil in your sink you can't control. Go clean out. You want some peace? Go clean out your garage. Clean out the closet at home that every time you open it, clothes are falling down on top of you. It's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church on New Year's Eve Sunday. You got to get victory. You got to do the right things. Pick up your stuff. Don't leave your house a mess. Put your dishes away. Put them in the dishwasher. Amen. Amen. All the men are awfully quiet right now. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. What is 4? 4 is we got to practice generosity. Psalm 1, come on, am I helping anybody? Psalm 112 says, Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely who conduct their affairs with justice. you got to be generous. you got to lend freely. Be generous in life. Malachi says, chapter 3 says, bring the tithe to the house of God. Some can't figure out why they're broke. You know why? Because they're not bringing the tithe to the storehouse. They're not bringing the tithe to the storehouse. He said, if you'll do that, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive. You've got to bring, bring the tithe to the storehouse. 
That's just pastoral counsel. You gotta, you gotta be generous with whatever your time, your talent, your treasures. Some people can't figure out. I'm struggling financially. Well, you're tithing? No. I know one. I know one pastor that years ago somebody came and told him that they were struggling. He said, "Are you tithing?" They're like, "No, I, I, I don't tithe." He's like, "Well, you're supposed to be broke." I didn't say that. I'm just quoting what he said. Some want to harvest without the seed. Seed time comes first. Seed time and harvest. When you go, just practice generosity. Don't scowl when you walk by the Salvation Army bucket. Don't scowl at the guy begging for some money on the side of the road. Be kind. Be generous. Tip generously. Well, she didn't, she didn't serve me very well. Maybe her husband hit her last night. Maybe she's going through a divorce. And it's all she can do to get up and get to work. You don't know their story. Why do you care what their story is? You're just generous. It's not about them. You're, you're not trying to tip based on how good they treated you. You tip based on how good you want to treat them. Amen? Amen? Well, you know, everybody wants a tip. That's true. If you can't afford the tip, don't go to eat. Stay home. Am I helping anybody? I know I'm meddling. I know it, but I had to. It's the last Sunday of the year. Got to treat people right. Change your attitude about some things. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. What is three? You got to be in the Word in prayer. These last three are, are for everybody for sure. Maybe you already do some of the others. James chapter 1 and verse 22 says this. Do not merely listen to what listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. A lot of people are hearers. They're just not doers. You got to make this a priority. If we believe that prayer and the word make a difference, we need to do it more. This is what you got to figure out. You got to spend time in the word. You, you ought to get a reading plan for 24. Yes. Read the scripture every day. Yes. Get on a reading plan. Even if you don't read the Bible through in a year, that's okay. But read a proverb a day. Do something. Turn off Netflix. Turn off Hulu. Turn off all that for a few minutes. Put it on. Uh, I, I figured out a few weeks ago that my I don't even have to connect the, the wire in my, in my car anymore. I just get in and Bluetooth picks it up. If I'll just play the app... When I turn my car on, Proverbs is being read to me. Like, you didn't know that? I did not know that. Stop judging me. You young people did not show me that when I got the car. I have to figure this stuff out on my own. But I, I figured it out. We got 21 days of prayer coming. I challenge you to be here. Is it out of your comfort zone? Probably. It is actually, I think he said 9, it's actually 10 o'clock beginning on the 13th of the thirteenth of January. It will be our first Saturday. We'll have three Saturdays where we're praying with Church of the Highlands beginning at 10 o'clock, 21 days of prayer. Well, I don't usually come to those, I know, but you need to get out of that habit. The habit. Well, you think it'll do me any good? It won't hurt you. Well, you know, I got this. But I, okay, all right. Figure it out. Okay. I hope it works for you. You're going to have to meditate the word. We got revival night coming on the 24th. You got to be here. Amen. Meditation of the word. You got to meditate the word. Meditation gives you penetration to the impossible. Amen. Meditation gives you penetration to the impossible. With God, all things are possible. You got to show up. You got to do these things. Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. What is 2? You've got to learn to use your faith. Everybody's got to learn to use their faith in 24. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says this. Without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. impossible. To please God. 
If you want to please God, you're going to have to believe God. It go, yeah, it goes on to say that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith, using your faith. Hear me carefully now. Using your faith is how things manifest in your life. Believing God. You have to go from information to revelation. You're getting information, but it's got to go to revelation. You got to believe for the oh, believing opens the door for the delivery of God's promise into your life. Let me say this to you. Believing is seeing. Faith is released primarily by your words. Proverbs 18, 21 says life and death are in the power of the tongue. I hear people still talking about, oh, that just killed me. No, it didn't. You're still walking. Well, I thought I was so sick, I thought I was going to die. Words. Words. You got to get faith-filled words that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I, I triumph every time in Jesus Christ. Believing is seeing. Speak the word. See it come to pass. Many times in our city, if you see something, say something. But in the spirit, you got to say something, then you'll see something. Faith will take you to a place called from now on. In Luke 5, Jesus told the disciples to throw the net on the other side after they'd been fishing all night and they told them to launch out into the deep for a great catch and they caught a great catch and they came back in and they were amazed at such the catch and Jesus said, up until this point, you have caught fish, but hear, hear me carefully, I'm going to come down here for just a minute. Get, get what I'm saying to you, but from now on, you will catch fish. Men, I've come with a word that faith is going to take you to a place called from now on. You've been sick up to this point, but from now on, you're going to experience healing in your life. You've been broke all the days of your life, but from now on, you're going to experience prosperity. Up to this point, your income has been limited. You couldn't see any further than making 80000 a year. But from now on, you're about to go into six-digit numbers. Some of you are going to go into seven-digit numbers in a year. Faith can see it. Faith can see it. you got to say it. From now on, you're not going to be depressed. You've been depressed, but from now on, you young kids, you've been sometimes thinking, well, how's God ever going to... I hear I didn't kick Grayson. That, that you know, how's God going to use me? I don't know how what he could do and all of that, but from now on... You're going to be the youth that run the place. You're going to be young adults that go to the mission field. You're going to be, you're going to be the one serving over at open table and glad to do it because you're helping somebody else. Oh, wait, i got a couple more over here. Look at all these young people sitting on the front row. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I need to see you over i got to kick you. surprised they didn't fall out under that kick. <laughs> Jobs are turning around. If you got a business, it hadn't been working, but from now on, from now on, from now on, it's about to turn around. All right, after this last one, you can even say Happy New Year. Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! Come on. Get my singers to come on up here. Singers, come on up here. What is number one? Number one.
thing you got to have for 24 is you got to have the presence of Jesus. There's nothing else I can tell you more important than that. Be very clear. Jesus is the answer to whatever you need. struggle hear me carefully you don't have enough Jesus well I got all you know if I'm fighting depression you know what the answer to depression is it's more of Jesus you know why you and your, your you, you know you why you and your man are fighting you don't have enough Jesus in your house you want to know what the cure for depression is more of Jesus you want to know what the cure to anxiety is? It's more of Jesus. Well, you know, I, I'm going to this counselor and I'm doing that. That's good. I, I'm, look, that's fine. That's all good. But I want to tell you the answer is more of Jesus. He's the answer to racism. Our state just put together a task force to study and make recommendations about how to deal with hate. It's a hate task force. It, it'll probably do something good. I don't know. But it can't change the heart of a man. No task force is the answer. It's good. It's fine. I'm, not, I'm just saying they're looking to try to change people's hearts without the one who changes their heart. Amen? Jesus is the answer to racism. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer to terrorism. They can have all the peace councils they want. and They can do all of that and figure all that out and all that. It, until a man's heart's changed by Jesus, nothing else is going to change. They'll stop. They'll have a ceasefire. But that's all it is, is a temporary ceasefire. Why? Because they don't have enough Jesus. You, you need a breakthrough in your home, you need more Jesus. In 24, that's what we're saying. You're seeing us most far more of Jesus in 24. And if you're struggling, young adults, if you're struggling, it's because you don't have enough Jesus. You got the world, you got your cell phone, you got Netflix, I got Hulu, I got this, but I don't, but Hulu isn't going to save you when, when the business is going down. Amen? Hulu doesn't help your kids act right. Hulu probably makes it worse. Netflix. You don't need Netflix to raise your kids. You need more Jesus. We used to sing that song. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Sing it again. Jesus is the singer. 
unless they're singing about the Lord. They don't have it figured out. I'm not trying to diss anybody. I'm just saying we got to we got to change some things. PJ, we got to shift in 24. Otherwise, it's going to be the same way it's always been with you. I don't know about you. I need more of Jesus. I need less of the world. Let's pray right now. I hope today's message was an encouragement to you. And if it was, please take just a minute, like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button so that every time we bring out a new life-giving message, you will be the first to know. We'd love to hear from you. Put a comment in there and share. Why not share this great message of hope with someone else? We look forward to connecting with you more. And please visit MotorCityChurch.org. We'll see you next week.